人は生まれながらに平等じゃないでも君はヒーローになれる夢は現実に Welcome to Tagi Silva's 10th anime review for Spring's latest set, My Hero Academia. I'm anime legend Malesh, and here with me is anime novice Nate. Have you ever wanted a Western comics like story in anime? Well, lucky for you, My Hero Academia fits that role perfectly. It's a perfect underdog story that follows the main character through his quest in the premiere of Superhero High School to become the very best that he can be. It's a really nice show in anime. So what did you think about it, Nate, since you actually do like American superheroes? Well, Malesh, I gotta say this anime was pretty good. It's the most popular anime I've seen since One Punch Man, which was another superhero anime that exploded in the West. Many Westerners that I know say that My Hero Academia satisfies similar superhero anime cravings. However, I think the target demographic for Academia is clearly younger, due in part to the high school setting. For this reason, I wasn't totally captured by it, but it gives a nice spin on a lot of high school character growth tropes. So let's delve right into the plot. My Hero Academia aired in the spring season in 2016, while only 13 episodes. A little short for a shounen. However, the shounen lane does not deter what was an interesting story about a world where people started developing quirks. Think of it like the world of X-Men, but nearly everyone has a quirk, which pretty much is a superpower. This leads to the world already being used to having superpowers and having stuff like hero associations and hero schools where you learn to control your quirks. The show follows Mira Izuku, a guy that worships tons of superheroes and knows everything about them. Unfortunately for him though, he was born without a quirk. This causes him to get bullied a lot in school, especially by his former best friend Katsuki, who actually has a very powerful quirk. However, Mira manages to obtain an extremely powerful quirk but due to his nature, he can't use it that often, otherwise his body will get destroyed. Yeah, Midori's power is pretty much super strength, but since he gets it so late in life, he's unable to control it, because every time he uses it, the recoil just breaks his hands and his arms and everything else. So throughout the show, Midoriya struggles with his school life because he can't really perform his training in the academy. However, Midoriya is seen by others as having a hero spirit, and he makes the best of his situation by respecting others and caring for his friends. I really liked how Midoriya handled all of the really intense, pressured situations he was in, but the season ended so quickly that I didn't get to see as much character growth as I'd like. And on that note, we'll discuss the characters. As previously mentioned, Midoriya Izuku is the main character, a young man with a big heart who gets his quirk very late in his adolescence. He is a rather shy, sniveling character and he has a tendency to mumble to himself. In his middle school days, he has a pretty poor social life. However, his life turns around when he meets All Might, the most powerful and prolific superhero in the world. All Might is touched by Midoriya's compassion and decides to help Midoriya train to pass the Hero Academy entrance exam. Midoriya passes the entrance exam along with his longtime rival, Katsuki. Katsuki was a character I really did not like. Not just because he was a generic jerk, but I feel that he was written to be way too one-dimensional. He had almost no backstory other than he grew up with a powerful quirk and grew up privileged. However, in middle school, he picked on Midoriya constantly. In the Hero Academy, Katsuki has a crazy vendetta against Midoriya. So much so they let his emotions take the better of him and his skills are diminished whenever he fights Midoriya. He just seemed unrealistically hot-headed to me, considering he grew up as the popular kid. Aside from those two, Midoriya actually manages to befriend some other people when he's in his freshman year, which I'll let Malesh talk about. One of Midoriya's new pals is Oshiko, a kind girl that ends up helping him in the entrance exam, which will eventually lead him to fall in love with her. She's a fun character, mainly because the side effects of her quirk is really amusing to me. The other main pal Midoriya makes is the noble Ida, who wants to continue his family's legacy of being an ideal hero. Beyond that, there are other important characters, mainly in Midoriya's class and his teachers, who all get a little bit of characterization. So I expect season two to have a lot more development with these characters. This doesn't mean that no one changes yet. In fact, Midoriya goes through a ton of change by slowly transitioning to not become a total crybaby while he gains confidence in his abilities. Overall, I'd say the characters in My Hero Academia were fun and varied. However, my only real complaint is that the villains don't get a whole lot of development, but I expect that to change in Season 2. Now we'll jump into the animation. Studio Bones was behind this amazingly gorgeous anime. Now you may know Bones from another one of their previous works, an insanely popular hit known as Full Metal Alchemist. Bones generally has really great animation also for all their shows. My Hero Academia is no different. 
They did an excellent job of realizing the almost Western comic book ourselves seeing the manga and the incredibly fluid animation that made the fights a lot more enjoyable for me. Holmes is smart by splitting up the seasons so they have more money to make each season look incredibly gorgeous and then make it stand out from a lot of the other shonen who generally have really piss poor animation. I would also wholeheartedly agree that this anime had great animation and fight sequences and I'd also agree that it had a very unique art style. I have not seen any other work from Bones other than Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood, which I regard very highly. My Hero Academia has a pretty unique art style to me. I found it very visually pleasing. The special effects were also really good when the crazier quirks and explosions were showcased. Now we'll move on to the soundtrack and voice acting. This show is sort of like a slice of life, so the soundtrack is not particularly prolific or important. But when things got heated, I thought the accompanying backer music was pretty good. I just don't have much to say about it. The opening theme didn't really blow me away, but it actually did grow on me the more I heard it and I would definitely say it does get you pumped for the events in the episode. In terms of voice acting, I had to watch the Japanese audio because the English dub hadn't come out yet. However, I actually didn't like Midoriya's voice in Japanese, and even though I got used to it because I heard it first, when I heard the English voice actor from Midoriya, I thought he was much better. I also think the main superhero, All Might, has an excellent English voice actor as well. I would definitely say the dub is totally watchable for any anime casuals and anime newbies. I agree with Nate that the soundtrack was more noticeable during the more intense moments of the show, especially during the battle scenes where I really felt like they added a lot to it. As for the opening, I liked it. It was solid enough. And for the ending, I also quite enjoyed it and I also never skipped it, so it was alright. I was familiar with Midoriya's Japanese voice actor as he'd done a role previously I heard from him. I thought he perfectly fit his character. I also really enjoyed All Might's English lines they were a blast to hear. The rest of the cast did a great job as well. In the end, I would say personally, the show wasn't as radical as One Punch Man was, but it definitely brought something new to the table in terms of superhero animes. If you are an older adult, you might like this anime a lot less because of how prevalent the high school and adolescent themes are. However, this anime certainly showcases many other things unique in this type of genre that we in the West are very used to. I did like it, and when season two hits, I will definitely watch that. For any young adult fan of flashy superheroes and supervillains, anime newbies included, this is a recommendation from me. I was around My Hero Academia was starting off as a manga and we're calling everyone proclaiming to be the next big shonen. Honestly, I didn't see what all the hype was about. So I decided to read the first couple of chapters. While I did enjoy them, I didn't see where all the hype was coming from. I decided to stop reading the manga and just wait for the anime. If there was going to be one to give it another chance. And the second chance was well worth it. I really enjoyed the story a lot more in the anime form and the last couple episodes really blew me away. Season 1 was really great. And I'm really excited to see where season 2 goes, so I honestly think it's going to even blow up even more popularity-wise, and it's, it's going to be even better. At the time of writing this, only the subtitle version of My Hero Academia is available to watch for free on Hulu, Yahoo View, and Funimation. You can watch the dub, but it requires a premium subscription on Funimation. It may actually take a while for Hulu, Yahoo View, and Funimation to have the dub for free. As always, if you've already watched My Hero Academia, click the first link in the description for our post review discussion which includes some minor spoilers. And thanks for watching our review of My Hero Academia. Please give it a like or a comment for feedback, and we'll see you guys next time, hopefully, with our review of Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. My hero. Show me, show me what I gotta do. Made up my mind, wanna be like you, don't care. We'll never do say, I know I'll be surface you. And know I will. Stop anything else and go wrong.